What's up everyone, CJ here. I wanted to show you something I'm working on and specifically how I'm able to format dates and numbers in this app that I'm building. So I'm working on some web components that allow you to embed Blue Sky posts and threads. I'll do a, a deeper dive video on the Blue Sky API and, and how I built this thing out with web components and stuff like that. But what I wanted to show you today, is something I'm pretty excited about, which is how I'm able to format the dates and then also how I'm able to format larger numbers and automatically abbreviate them if they're over a certain amount. And I'm doing this using the Intel API. Now, the Intel API has been around since 2017. This is nothing new, but I just found it really refreshing that I was able to implement all of these things in my app without installing an extra library. Because in the past, typically you'd have to use something like moment.js, or maybe these days you might use something like date functions, but I was able to implement this with no extra libraries at all. So let me show you how I'm doing the date formatting. So here you can see I have a utils file that has multiple different formatters that I'm using across my application. I'm passing in navigator.language. And so this will set up the formatters to use the user's preferred language, whatever they have set in their web browser. And then you can pass in some options. So for this date formatter here, I'm passing in all of the options that's going to take a date and format it like so. But what's great is if I change my locale to something else. So for instance, let's swap over to Spanish. Now you can see that it formats it for Spanish speaking users. And so this is great because literally all I I had to do was pass the date in and now whatever locale the user has set that visits my website is going to see the date in their preferred format and so you can see here whenever i'm rendering it out i'm passing in an instance of a date and so the api actually gives us back just a string but that is in the correct format to be able to pass into the date constructor so all i have to do is pass in that date to our formatter.format function and it automatically uses these options and formats it using the user's preferred locale and so this is really awesome especially for other languages that might put things in a different order or have different preferences about how you should display dates so for instance Let's swap over to Japanese and then we'll refresh. And you can see that in Japanese, they actually put the year at the front. And this is the preferred display format using those, those options. So yeah, the date formatter is great. There's a bunch of other options you can pass in here as well. Check out the MDN page to see all of the different options you can pass in. And maybe take a look at some of the apps that you're building to see where you can potentially pull out a date formatting library and just use the Intel API instead. Next, I want to show you how I'm using the number formatter. So you can see here, this specific post has a little over 3.6 thousand likes, but it's actually being abbreviated with that capital. K there. And the thing that allows us to do this is intel.number format. You can see here that I have notations set to compact, but they support quite a few other notations. If we set to standard, you'll see that it actually shows the full number, but in this case with commas, because I'm in the English locale. But let's, for instance, swap back over to Spanish. And then you can see in the locale of Spanish, they actually don't add any commas or periods for numbers that are less than uh, 10,000. But if we look at a post that has lots of likes like this one, you can see it has 88,000 likes. And so in the Spanish locale, we actually see a period there. But but we're not seeing commas or periods for the smaller numbers. And let's take a look at what this looks like in German as well. So you can see in a German locale, they actually do prefer putting periods for numbers that are greater than a thousand. And so this is awesome. Anywhere I want to display the number, I'm passing it into that number formatter. And of course, the common pattern you see on lots of social networking websites is to abbreviate larger numbers. So if we switch back to compact, you can see in the German locale, it actually doesn't abbreviate it when we're in compact mode. And that's the preferred settings for that locale. But if we switch to, let's say like Japanese, you can see in Japanese for very large numbers, they add that abbreviation there. So this one's great, super simple to add, not many options, and it just works instantly with any number you pass into it. Now, the last formatter I'm using is the relative time formatter. You can see for all of the post replies, we're actually showing how long ago that reply occurred. And so this post is less than a day old, so most of the replies are just a few hours old. Uh, this particular post is a few days old. You can see it says like one day ago, two days ago. This post is a few days old, so you can see here it's saying like four days ago, two days ago, etc. And then here are some posts that are much older, and it's saying like one week ago or three weeks ago. So to do this, we're using intel.relative time format. And in this case, I have the style set to long, but they also support other formats. So here we could do the narrow format, and that's actually going to abbreviate the time. So 18h ago instead of 18 hours ago. And so 4d ago instead of four days ago. And again, this one is internationalized as well. So you've probably seen it as I've been demonstrating these other languages, but let's swap out to German and, and see what this looks like. So you can see here, vor vier Tagen, vor zwei Tagen. It's been a long time since I've spoken German, but as you can see, it translates as well. Now, this is the one, the Intel API that actually does require a little bit of extra code. And first up, shout out to Web Dev Simplified. He actually has a blog post where he talks about how to do this. But essentially, the formatter is very simple. It just takes in a unit, which can be things like years, seconds, days, hours, months. And then you pass in that specific unit. So if you want it to say four days ago or five days ago, you would actually pass in five for the number, and then the unit would be days. So it's not automatic. You can see that we have a little bit of calculation that we 
we need to do. Essentially, we need to figure out what is the total duration that we're trying to display. So we get the current time and subtract that from the date that we're trying to display, divide by a thousand to turn it into seconds. And then we're going one by one to find the unit that it's less than. So we see, is it less than 60 seconds? Is it less than 60 minutes? Is it less than 24 hours? Is it less than seven days? And then when we find that particular unit, that's the one that we use to format. So not super straightforward, but still a whole lot less code than having to bring in an entire library. And we get some nice relative times there. So that's all I wanted to show in this video, but I'm just super excited about the fact that we can do this directly in the browser now. So like I said at the beginning of the video, these have been around for a long time. They're nothing new, but I encourage you to look at some of your projects and maybe take a look. Can you pull out moment.js or date functions or one of these other libraries that uh, is doing things that you could actually just do directly in the web browser? Now you can check out can I use to see support. Now both date time format and number format have support going all the way back to IE 11. So these have been around for a very long time. Relative time format is a little bit newer, so it doesn't support IE 11. These days, that's not really even an issue. You can see that it's green across all of the modern web browsers. So that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you're already using the Intel API. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to start and uh, keep on coding. I'll see you in the next one.